everybody welcome back to my channel my name is Amy and this is my craft channel um, I don't know if this spiel is getting old but um, you know we do all sorts of crafts here today is a uh, video about well today is a whip and chat doing cross stitch um, I have the heck did you guys hear that I think one of my kids is up. Um, it's very early in the morning, which is why there's still a shadow. Not only that, but it's overcast. Um, so the sun hasn't quite gotten where it should be. <laughs> so there is going to be a little bit of a shadow right here. I just hope it doesn't bother anybody. Um, today we're working on the Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. You guys are really close, but this is the box that I'm working on today. It is the very center of the pattern. So the center of the pattern um, is actually, um, these two blocks are broken down into two pieces. And so from the center here, this way, is um, the section that I decided to start. And so I've gotten all of the flames in the cauldron here, um, which is here, and then I've started on the actual base of the cauldron itself. And then I decided to start coming over here and doing some of this. Um, I haven't put in this color yet because that's the only section it's used and I didn't want to waste um, I don't want to have the thread hanging and so there's more over here I think the owl is the same color and then there's more on the other side so I started on the bottom of her dress and I've gotten this whole part done except for the yellow that goes in here and I'm running out of room here because of the Q-snap and so I'm gonna go ahead and come up and just start filling the bait the apron Right here in and go from there I thought about doing the pumpkin but um, I don't have enough room on this side so that's gonna have to wait until we move the Q snap I decided to start exactly in the center and I actually put my fabric in the center of the Q snap instead of I should have pushed it more that way so I could do the whole center block without having to move the Q snap but whatever it is what it is um, this needle binder is courtesy of the Hogwarts um, retreat box um year one they gave everybody a needle miner with their name on it that is so freaking cool i really want one of these machines the glow forge machine and my coffee cup is also courtesy of the frog wars retreat so there's that i hope we get a coffee cup for every every box because i'm pretty sure there's gonna be seven i don't know we'll see so let's get started um, if you didn't know, this pattern is from Carriage House Samplings. Um, I'm also using, let me see if I can put this. I need to come up with some kind of system for this because the original Q-snaps or plastic snap frames, because I get the off-brand all the time, are thinner than my frames that I made myself at, um, not at, but... The frames that I put together myself that I cut from PVC pipe are a lot thicker than the um, plastic snap frames. And so this metal, not, this wooden stem doesn't quite hold these ones very well. And so there's a lot of play in the frame when you put it down and it kind of, uh, like it goes down more. And so... I don't know, I'm thinking of maybe finding like a small clipboard I can put underneath it to use that as a base to hold it up higher so it doesn't, um, because you have it in there and then it kind of tilts down because the frame's so thin and it holds on to the, uh, I hope you can see this color. It holds on to the, the end piece here, like the part that you snap the fabric in with and uh, doesn't quite reach the base of the frame, if that makes any freaking sense at all. Probably doesn't, you guys probably don't know what I'm talking about. I'm using this wooden stand from Edmunds from Hobby Lobby. I actually really like it for the most part. Um, it's perfect for sitting in my computer chair, and it's also perfect for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, sitting on the couch with. I absolutely love it. 
Um, there's a mosquito in here. The mosquitoes are so bad right now. I am stitching this on 32 count um, shadow from Be Stitch Me. I'm pretty sure this is 32 count. Yeah, this is 32 count. So this is my first time actually stitching on 32 count fabric. Um, it, uh, I like it, but I stitch a lot of times in a lot of low light situations and this isn't really the best fabric for that but whatever you know i'm sure if it was brighter it would be a little easier but it's kind of dark it's like a mix of navy blue purple and gray um i feel like it has a couple different shades of purple in it but um yeah anyway like i was saying today's monday but i thought i don't know when this video is going to go up probably not till later in the week but my father-in-law has a very important doctor's appointment today, and um, everybody was going to go. Um, we can't go in, which is fine. We just, um, we all like to go into the parking lot and kind of gather, and everybody walks him in and waits for him. And my husband got the time wrong. He told me that the appointment was at 8 that um, they were going to be there at 8. And so I got up at 7, started getting ready so that I could be there. And he's like, yeah, I got the time wrong. It's at um, 9.20. I don't know why, what he was thinking. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't know what he was thinking. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to go. I'm waiting for my husband to call me and tell me that they're leaving. So I can see... Um, like if I'm going to be able to make it or not because my kids have their Zoom meetings at 10 is when they start. And so I told my husband, like, well, there's a chance that, like, um, I'm not going to be able to go if, you know, it's at 930. By the time I get back, then, like, I'm going to be running really late for the meeting. So I don't know if I'm going to go or not. I'm kind of nervous to see. So somebody was asking about my father-in-law. I don't know who it was. And if I didn't respond to your comment, it's because um, I was just going to address it in a video because you're not the first person to ask. Um, my father-in-law has uh, prostate cancer. And I'm not sure what stage he's in because um, like, I don't go to his appointments with him. And when the family talks about it, they don't talk about it in stages. And so... Um, he's had it for several years now and he was getting treatment prior to the chemotherapy and he received that treatment for a number of years and then um, the cancer advanced and so they bumped him up to start doing chemotherapy and he just started chemo um, and today is when they find out how much chemo they think they can give him if so he started chemo already. He's taken one treatment so far, but um, they have to test you to see how much chemo you your body is going to need to hopefully fight off the cancer. And then also um, they have more detailed information on whether or not they think that the chemotherapy is even going to work in the first place. And so that appointment is today. So everybody's kind of walking on eggshells right now, trying to see, you know, just hoping for the best possible outcome. I know there's a mosquito in here and I'm constantly feeling like there is something crawling on me and there's not because I look over and there's nothing there. So funny story, the other day I was in here doing homework at my desk and um, my my door, like the entrance to my office, is um, like on my what is it? My right hand side, but I can't really see it if I'm facing my desk because I have a curtain. It's like a French door setup, and 
Did I kick you guys? Um, so I, well, of course, my cats have bells on their collars, and I didn't hear my cat walk in. And I'm just sitting here, minding my own business, doing my homework, and my cat gets up on my chair and puts his paw on my back. Oh my god. I was so freaking freaked out. You know, like when somebody scares you and just like the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you kind of freeze. And it's like a scary movie where you turn around very slowly to see what it is you saw or you think you saw or you felt or whatever. That is exactly how I freaking felt. And what was weird about it was I didn't, I know I didn't see anybody walk in because my daughter, my six year old, she does that same shit too. And she just like sneaks around all creepy like and scares the crap out of people. Um, and so I thought it was her and I was like, no, I would have saw her walk in because she's, you know, obviously a lot taller and you're going to notice a person walking by in the corner of your eye. And so I turned around so freaking slow and it was my cat. He reached up on my chair. Of course, you know, my back is facing him and he put his paw like on my lower back, but on the side. Oh my God. It just felt so freaking creepy and scary. I could not shake that nasty feeling that he left me with after that. Oh my gosh. It was very creepy. And the thing is, is that he has a bell on his collar and I don't, maybe I was just so like immersed in what I was reading that I didn't hear his bell walk in or maybe he was just walking in such a way that his bell didn't ring at all as he approached my office, walked in and got up on his two back legs to touch me. It was just so very strange the way it all played out. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what though, you guys, I am so ready for fall. So I live in Southwest, um, I don't know, let me see. Well, I live in Southern New Mexico and I live on the, um, Texas border. In the, um, Southeast corner of New Mexico. And we're considered a border town because we're so close to Juarez, Mexico. And um, it's very freaking hot. <laughs> very hot. Um, I don't particularly like the heat. Um, it's nice, like in the summer, to get to go swimming and, you know, go to the water park and stuff like I mean, not that we did that this year, but I'm just, you know, in general. Um but I don't like to be hot. I hate to be hot. I hate sweating. Mainly because when you're hot, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. You can maybe go get in the pool. But like for people who are working, like obviously that might not be an option for you. And then of course, like this pandemic, I don't even believe that the swimming pool is open this summer. I didn't bother checking because I wasn't going to take my kids to the public pool anyway. Um, and we live, our neighborhood doesn't, like, I don't live in an area that has, like, um, a swimming pool that we can openly use. I gotta mark my place here for a second. And so, you know, it's kind of like, what can we do to keep ourselves cool, um, while... Like, what can we do to keep ourselves cool, you know, in general? And it, it's very hard coming up with things to do, um, especially, like, if you want to go out or if you have errands to run or if you want to go shopping or whatever. Again, I mean, in general, I'm not saying that I'm out shopping during the pandemic because we weren't. Um, but generally speaking, we've lived here for five years now, uh, actually five and a half coming up now because we're coming into winter so in a couple months it'll already be five and a half um and so it's just it's crazy you know I don't know 
I don't know how people who live in Arizona do it, or at least people who live in Phoenix and Tucson and those surrounding places because it is hotter there than it is here. Um, most, you know, because the city's bigger, um, asphalt is a lot hotter. Now, if you've ever noticed, um, if you're driving through a city, the temperature kind of um, rises when you're in the city versus like if you're out driving in the country or something. Um, and so I just don't know how people do it. I have a couple friends who live in the Phoenix, Tucson area, and I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. Um, you know, I know having a swimming pool is nice and it helps, but like when you're working and you have kids, like you just don't have time to go swimming every day to cool off. Um, yeah, I love Arizona. Don't get me wrong. Um, my mom lives in Arizona and it's so hot over there too. Cause she lives in, um, also Southern Arizona and, um, I just can't do it guys. I mean, I wouldn't be totally against like having to move there for whatever reason, but it wouldn't be like my first choice, if that makes sense. I don't know if any of you are from Arizona or live in Arizona. I, we lived there for a number of years as well, um, both growing up and um, as an adult. And uh, it's still like freaking mosquito. It was still hotter than, than a mofo over there. You know. Anyway, how long are we at? 15 minutes? I don't know what to talk about, you guys. Um, I have a video going up today, which is my most commonly asked diamond painting business questions related to, like, the sickle diamond art. Um, people, I get a lot of the same questions over and over, and so I figured that, like, what better way than to address that in a video. And I might even send it out in the next um, new releases on Wednesday. I have another batch, not new releases, but restocks on Wednesday. And so I might include the link to that video in that email to my customers just so I can make sure that, because I know that a lot of my customers don't follow my YouTube channel because they're only interested in diamond painting and don't want to see the cross stitch stuff. So it is what it is. Um, haven't had a whole lot going on. Um, I've been really focusing on mystical diamond art and, you know, being here at home. And this weekend, I, we didn't do much. Mm, let's see, what day was it? I think, was it Friday night? Friday night, my husband spent the night at his dad's house again. And, uh... So I didn't see him that night. He left, you know, at night. And then Saturday night, we watched movies. He came home late. Um, but I still haven't watched Bill and Ted. I was w hoping to watch that this weekend, but my husband doesn't like Bill and Ted. Oh no, I was going to only do one. My husband doesn't like Bill and Ted. I don't know what planet he's from that he does not like Bill and Ted, but whatever. Um... So I haven't watched that yet. I I don't know. Maybe tonight. I don't know. We'll see. If my husband doesn't come home tonight, then I'm going to watch Bill and Ted. The only thing that sucks is that it's like $25 to rent on Prime. And I saw that it said that it was in theaters, but I honestly haven't checked to see what movies my theater is playing because they're doing drive-in style. They're not open, um, but they're allowing drive-in movies. And that's cool. Except that my stepson went one time and he said that it sucked because they put you in order by what type of vehicle you're in. And so he went in um, our truck thinking that like, oh yeah, I'm going to get a good seat and um, you know, we're higher up and we're in the truck and blah, blah, blah. It ended up not being that good. He said that like they put all the trucks in the back um, so that the small cars can see. Which makes total sense that I wouldn't mind going in my car, except that, like, 
I don't want to sit in my car for two hours watching a movie, you know. Um, it would make better sense to go in the truck so you can lay in the back. Except that, um, I don't know how they're doing it. Like, I don't know if they're still having sound or if they're only relying on people to use their radios. Because I know when you go, you have to turn your radio to whatever station they're broadcasting the sound on and so I'm unsure like just feel like it wouldn't be as enjoyable like for me part of the whole ambiance of going to the movie is um the surround sound <laughs> you know like we had surround sound here for a while and we took it down because my husband and I were always fighting about the sound because he wants to watch like every freaking thing with surround sound and I'm like, I only want to watch movies with surround sound. He would put it on, like, when he was listening to ESPN. And he'd have the surround sound on for every single little show. And it was really frustrating. Um, so we ended up taking it down. And we gave it to my father-in-law. So he has it now at his house. But um, that's, like, one of the best parts of going to the movies is just being able to experience the sound quality that they have. Um I'm sure, I mean, you can get the same sound quality at home, but for me, that's one of the things that I like. And of course, the snacks. Like, who doesn't love movie theater snacks, you know? That's my husband's whole deal, too. Like, I can go to the movies and not get any snacks and be perfectly fine. My husband is a totally different uh, kind of animal. He cannot go to the movie and not get snacks like he absolutely has to like he will refuse to go to the movies if he can't get snacks that's how bad he is this whole thing just moved i'm gonna have to try to move this a bit okay hopefully you guys are good there that's one of the things i hate about tripods is the limited functionality of the way that you can turn the camera and um mainly i'm sure like they make fancier tripods but mine like the base that the camera sits on, I can't move that very many ways. Um, I can kind of adjust it from being crooked, but it only goes one direction, doesn't go the other direction. So it's really a pain in the butt. I'm sure if I had a nicer one, it might be okay. But like to me, I think I paid like 30 bucks for this one a while back. I still feel like that's kind of a lot. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. No, I mean, it's not a lot. I, um, at the time I was recording stationary videos when I purchased this tripod, I wasn't recording, um, cross stitch videos or stitch with me's or anything. And I, um, was barely getting into diamond painting. And so I didn't like anticipate that I was going to need a nicer tripod for anything, but it is what it is. I'm also contemplating even getting like a real camera. The problem with that though is that I feel like if I'm recording on a camera, I'm going to have less functionality. Not functionality, but I'm going to have less opportunities to edit the videos because I currently edit everything on my phone. And so like if I took that away and I'd actually have to sit at the computer to edit. It's like, I just, I don't know. I think I spent enough time at the computer as it is. And I edit like in my car sometimes when I'm waiting for my husband somewhere. Or um, I'll edit like when I'm laying down in bed and things like that. And I just, I don't want to have to take my computer everywhere because I change the format, like the way I make the videos. Does that make sense? And I don't want to have like a second device, um, like one for recording and one for my regular phone, because then I'm going to have to be carrying two phones around and I don't like that either. So I don't know. I know a lot of people use a camera and edit on their computer, but I just don't have the patience for that mostly because my schedule is a lot different than a lot of other people's you know because I have kids and I go to school and I already work from home and stuff and I just don't want that added task 
of having to pull that off of an SD card and edit it on a computer. I don't know why, but these stitches are not coming out as even as the my cauldron stitches came out so freaking nice. Not the cauldron, but the flames right here came out so nice. Can you tell like the different... I'm trying to keep my tension the same, and I feel like it's just not having it today. I've noticed that about some colors. I don't know if anybody else has noticed it, but I've noticed that with some colors, I just cannot make nice stitches with. Like white, I can't make nice stitches with white floss. So I hate patterns that call for like gobs and gobs of white. Um, you know, I don't know. It just, it is what it is. <laughs> Uh, we went for a little ride on the motorcycle last night my nephew um my husband's nephew got him he bought himself a little harley and so um he's been trying to get used to riding it and get comfortable and stuff and so we went you know we, he started out riding up and down his street and then around the block because for me I, I, you know, from experience and from what a lot of other people say too, one of the hardest parts of getting riding a motorcycle down is um, learning how to turn because it's not like a bicycle where you just turn your steering, um, your handlebars and you turn. When you ride a motorcycle, it's completely different. Like you got to lean into the turn and it's kind of scary. And so, uh, my son took him the other day riding, and then yesterday he asked my husband, like, hey, you want to go? And so we went riding around his area. He lives pretty close to the university, so we took him, we went to the university, and they've got, like, a lake there and stuff. And we went around there, and, you know, it was nice. It was nice to get out. Um, it's finally starting to cool down, and so... Um, it's going to be definite bike riding weather around here, at least, because it's starting to cool off. I know there's other places, like when we lived in Colorado, it was like motorcycle riding weather year-round because um, we're so used to the heat that when it was cold or when the snow was just starting to come down, we'd still, ride. well, I wasn't riding at that time, but my husband would be out still riding his bike um because we were used to the heat and so <laughs> when we were in Colorado like it was a completely different ball game to be riding in the snow versus riding in 100 degree heat you know so pull off another thread all right let me see mark off where I am on this one right here I think that's it you guys I think I'm going to end it here and one, two, three, four, five. I think I'm going to end it here and make just make this a short whip and chat. I feel like I didn't get anything done. I, mean, I don't even know how many stitches that is 10, 20, 30, roughly 50 stitches between 40 and 50 stitches. It's not a lot in 30 minutes, but I was bullshitting the whole time too. You see how, like, easy this is to shake? I'm sure most stands are like that. Um, if you guys cross-stitch, let me know what your favorite stand is, if you have one. So this stand, let me see if I can show you guys. Okay, can you guys see? This is how this stand is set up. It's got a base. I like to put my feet on it because... My tension's not right on the bottom, and so it's a little uneven, but you can tell, like, it's even still, and this still wobbles, like, so much. You can bend it here, and then you can bend it. And then you can bend it, if you'll focus, two more places you can bend it here, and then um, this moves this arm and then it bends again here. And so, I don't know. I mean, it's not the functionality of the bending. 
Okay, I had to move you guys back because I didn't want to show the pattern. It's not the functionality of the bending. It's just for one, it's a little shaky. And for two, I just don't like how it makes the Q snap fall. Um, the plastic snap frame. Mostly the name brand. Not the name brand, but like the ones that you can get at the store. Um, the ones that I make myself fit just fine because they're a lot thicker. And it holds it a lot better. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just being picky. <laughs> anyway all right you guys that is it i'm gonna let you guys go try to keep this around 30 minutes and i will see you guys in the next video bye